Yes, my people, it is your boy VRD, and welcome back to another commentated drive. In today's video, we are going to be taking a 12 carriage class 387 up from Gatwick Airport to London Victoria non stop. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Just to keep the videos nice and versatile, just to add to the variety, I don't know how to word it, but we're going to be setting up this train from the state that it spawned in if that makes any sense so i haven't come in before recording and done anything this is the state that the train is in as it spawned in so we're entering the back cab now um a lot of this stuff i do isn't actually necessary but i just like doing it because i'm i'm a bit of a perfectionist you see so i've gone through there and closed the doors fly doors um we don't need to touch the safety systems panel setting the DRA and just ensuring that the tow light switch is in the off or auto position which it is the on or auto position guys the on or auto position ensuring that the FNR switch is in the off position and ensuring that no master key is inserted so that is the back cab check I'm just gonna close the door check that I'm recording I am recording um, and then we're just going to ensure that okay as I was saying after that we're just going to ensure that we have two red tail lights being displayed which we do so we can now make our way towards the front of this 12 carriage train and we're due out of Gatwick Airport in about 12 minutes time so there's no rush now with Electro Stars I'm not sure if it happens with any other types of trains but with Electro Stars and Trains in World when you take command of one that has spawned in in a stationary state, you sometimes have to configure the two cabs that are in between the consist, if that makes any sense. So you see we have these two cabs. I, I, I'm sorry guys, it's, it's, it's four o'clock in the morning. I can't even get my words out correctly, but yeah, we're just going to enter here, set the driver reminder appliance and turn off the tail light switch after that we're gonna open up the gangway so just configure those three doors in the way that i've done open up these two yellow fly doors enter the other cab and then do the same thing so set the driver reminder appliance and turn the tail light switch into the off position then configure these three doors in the way that I've done there we go we now because this train is a 12 carriage train we need to do all of this again so <laughs> we're going to make our way to the other gangway between the fourth and fifth carriage so here it is now Entering the forward facing cab of the middle unit, setting the driver reminder appliance, turning off the tail light switch, and just configuring these three doors correctly. And the gangway is already open, which is a bit weird. Um, I'm guessing this unit that we're in now may have come along and coupled up to that unit. I'm not sure, but anyway, we're in the other cab now. The rear facing cab of the front unit, so we're setting the driver reminder appliance, turning off the tail light switch, and configuring these doors correctly. There we go, so the corridor connections between the units are now successfully configured. We're now gonna make our way to the front of the train. So this is the front cab that we're in now. Just gonna come down here, close these white fly doors. I'm then gonna come over to the safety systems isolation panel, turn the AWS isolation switch into the vertical position and do the same with the DSD and vigilance isolation switches. I'm then gonna set the driver reminder appliance. I'm gonna sit in the driver's seat, take command of the service. I'm then going to insert the master key, turn the FNR switch into the neutral position and acknowledge the AWS self-test sequence. And 
then coming immediately over to the headlight switch panel and I'm going to turn the headlight switch into the night running position and that is due to the fact that it is dusk at the moment so as we drive towards Victoria it's most likely going to start getting darker so that just saves us from having to switch the configuration midway through the journey it's just logical to, to select night running from now I'm now going to open the passenger doors on the left hand side just look at our cooling pattern here so yep London Victoria platform 13 is our only stopping point and that is at the end of our journey so I'm going to come to the PIS click PI sorry this is the TMS I'm going to click PIS on the TMS and then click up to scroll to the bottom of the list straight away because that is where London Victoria is so I just clicked up a couple of times we're at London Victoria now confirm location and then click exit I'm now gonna quickly jump down here just to ensure that everything's being displayed correctly yep that looks fine to me so we have our bright headlight shining from the driver's side the LED light shining from the non-driver's side and our destination display reads London Victoria which is correct oh yeah there's a bit of an issue um in trains in world a 12 carriage train struggles to fit on platform six I'm not sure why but you if you're pulling into Gatwick Airport with a 12 carriage train into platform six and you it's just it's, it's very difficult to get the whole train to fit you have to literally pull right up onto the signal at the end of the platform which is a bit of, of a nightmare if that signal's displaying the red aspect which nine times out, nine times out of ten it's going to be um so yeah i'm not sure i think when they made the platform they made it a bit too short i doubt it's like this in real life but yeah i thought i pointed that out so I'm just gonna head back into the cab now and we're going to await our scheduled departure time so I'm gonna edit down the video I'll see you guys in a bit right so we're down to about 45 seconds prior to our departure time here we have a green signal so I'm going to reset the driver reminder appliance and I'm just gonna open the window here and look back along the train just to ensure everything's okay we can't actually see all the way down to the back of the train because of this little staircase in the way so in real life there would be a platform dispatcher here to aid us in the departure procedure we're now down to about 15 seconds prior to our departure time so i'm going to whack the door close button just glancing at those monitors door interlock lights have illuminated so every door along the full length of our train is closed and locked final glance at the cctv monitors and we can look back along the platform a final time as well i'm gonna close the window i won't drive with the windows open this time just so you guys can hear the difference in sound final glance of the signal we have a green aspect and i'm going to test the whole start button um whilst moving off from gatwick airport here so FNR switch into the forward position, holding down the whole start button, selecting off on the um, PBC. And we have a brake cylinder gauge reading of one bar, which is correct. I'm still currently holding down the whole start button. On a 387, power notch one, power notch two, then release the whole start button. And that's just, a, that's just to give you a bit of a more realistic it's up to you you can only go into power notch one if you want but i just go into power notch two and then release on the class 387 because that is that mirrors how the whole start button on a 387 functions in real life so we got up to 20 miles an hour i've gone down to power notch one because speed limit is currently 25 miles an hour until we clear the points here so we're up to 25 miles an hour i've shut off the power um, going into the off position on the PBC, whatever you want to call it. I'm no longer accelerating in simple terms. And because we are a long 12 carriage train, it's going to take us quite a while to clear the point work.
So we should be clear of the point work around now. The speed limit is now 90 miles an hour. But before accelerating up to that, we need to perform a running brake test. So I'm using Power Notch 2 to accelerate up to 30 miles an hour. Shutting off the power again, and I'm going to make a brake step 2 application. And just observe our speed fall by 10 miles an hour, releasing the brakes and straight into full power. Full steam ahead. This is Holy Station that we're passing through now. We are not stopping here. But I did stop here in my Class 700 video on the slow lines. Do you know what I just realised as well? I forgot to flip in turn off my freezer. <laughs> I, I normally turn off my freezer when I'm recording these videos because I've got a freezer in my room that I record in. I normally turn it off, but I forgot to do it this time. So if you guys can hear that in the background, I apologise. On the left is Salford Station. And not too far from here, we can expect a speed reduction down to 80 miles an hour. Now, this footbridge coming up, if you are traveling at 90 miles an hour, you would shut off your power there and gravity will bring your speed down to 80 miles an hour but because we're traveling a little bit lower than 90 we're traveling slightly slower than 90 miles an hour i just delayed that action a bit so i've gone into the off position about now and that should bring our speed down for the 80 miles an hour limit in time Yeah, as you can see, our speed is starting to fall off a bit. This is Oldswood Station on the left coming up, and our 80 mile an hour speed limit commences at this green signal coming up here. So yeah, you can see we're now down to 80 miles an hour. I've gone into Power Notch 2. We're on a shallow upward gradient at the moment. We've been on that gradient since, I'd say, Holy Station. But that is now going to become a steep upward gradient. Speed limit is now going back up to 90 miles an hour, so I've gone straight into the Power Notch 4 position. This is Red Hill Tunnel.
Sorry, I was just stretching there, guys. I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> anyway, we're approaching Quarry Tunnel now. Again, providing you're traveling at 90 miles an hour, shut off your power from now. So on entry into Quarry Tunnel, and that is because the summit of our climb is just towards the end of Quarry Tunnel. So after that, we're going to be on a steep downward gradient for quite a bit. And then after that, we're going to be on a shallow downward gradient up until East Craydon. So what we're actually doing is causing our speed to fall down to 85 miles an hour. We're going to cross over the summit. And then by the time we hit the bottom of the downward gradient, our speed would have rolled back up to 90 miles an hour. So it's economically effective driving. I can't remember the word of it. What's it called? E economic driving? I think it's called economic driving. So yeah, we just exited Quarry Tunnel now. We're now on a downward gradient and our speed has fallen to 85 miles an hour. And it's going to slowly roll back up to 90 miles an hour. It's also worth mentioning that if you're in a 12, sorry, we're in a 12 carriage train now. If you're in a 4 carriage train, you would delay shutting off the power a bit because 4 carriage trains naturally have less momentum than 8 and 12 carriage trains. I'd say 8 and 12 carriage trains carry a similar amount of momentum, but with a 4 carriage train, there's a significant difference in momentum. They actually their speed falls off a lot quicker than 8 and 12 carriage trains after shutting off the power so yeah just keep that in mind So you can see we're already up to 88 miles an hour. This is the covered way that we're passing through. And we're already up to 90 miles an hour. I have a feeling that we're going to momentarily exceed 90 miles an hour, but I'm not going to bother applying the brakes because for one, we were soon going to have a speed reduction down to 60 miles an hour. And two, I'm sure we're going to remain within the two and a half mile an hour threshold that I have. A general rule that I normally have is if you're going to exceed the speed limit, as long as you're within two and a half miles an hour above the speed limit and you're not and you're within that threshold but you're not there for too long it's not the end of the world so yeah we're probably going to end up hitting about 91 miles an hour maybe 92 but we're literally going to apply the brakes soon for a speed reduction down to 60 miles an hour so i don't see the point in rectifying the speed it's, it's just pointless the safety of the train isn't being compromised in any way so yeah, that was Pearly Station that we just passed through. Yeah, so we're now doing about 91 miles an hour. This is Pearly Oak Station. Just acknowledged an audible AWS indication regarding a warning board for the speed reduction down to 60 miles an hour. So I'm going to make a brake application about now. Just a brake step one application should bring us down for that speed limit in time. The speed limit commences just before South Craydon Station. down to 70 miles an hour it's 
65 and down to 60 miles an hour just in time I'm not sure if you guys saw the little board there it was quite a small board very hard to make out with the number 60 on it down at track level just past through South Croydon station and we have a further speed reduction down to 45 miles an hour very surely although there's no warning board regarding that but I'd say about now is a good time to get the brakes in for that and I can see that at our next signal we have a position 1 junction indicator so 5 white lights pointing diagonally upwards to the left that tells us that we're being routed through platform 1 so the speed limit for platform 1 through East Croydon station is 30 miles an hour so our speed has fallen to 45 miles an hour but I'm going to continue to leave the brakes in and decelerate down to 30 miles an hour so you can see the little board there with the number 30 on it and we're down to 30 miles an hour now so releasing the brakes this is East Croydon station the 40 the 45 mile an hour speed limit commenced at the signal with the position one junction indicator but I didn't really get to cool it out because I was commentating on quite a few other things a bit of a high workload there coming into East Croydon speed limit has now increased to 45 miles an hour it increases to 45 miles an hour midway through East Croydon platform one so I've gone into power notch two just to gently accelerate speed limit is now increasing to 60 miles an hour so I'm just going to remain in power notch 2 just to give us a nice controlled acceleration up to that speed now I'm going to show you guys a trick and I think I did show you guys this trick in my Rygate to Victoria video but that was in a four carriage train so the technique I used was slightly different what I'm going to do is accelerate up to about 55 miles an hour and then I'm going to shut off the power So from, I'd say about here, so just before passing through Soha Station, we're going to be on a, majority of our journey into Victoria is going to be on a downward gradient. So this is Soha Station that we're passing through now. Speed limit has now gone up to 70 miles an hour. The board for that was just before Soha Station. But I'm just going to remain in the off position on the PBC. And our speed will eventually roll upwards towards 70 miles an hour. And then there's a speed reduction down to 60 miles an hour. Shortly before passing through Balham Station, which is about probably a good four miles from here. And our speed is actually going to naturally roll down for that 60 mile an hour speed limit as well. So again, it's just economic driving here. Rather than having to manually... Um, manually move the PBC to accelerate up to the speed limit and brake you could just leave the PBC in the off position and gravity will do everything for you you don't think I'm making this up pal. you can literally watch and see it for yourselves so we just passed through Fort and Heath station we're on a slight downward gradient but it's it's very, very, very shallow, very shallow at the moment. Between Selhurst and Fort and Heath, it was quite steep, but it's, it's leveled off a bit. We're now approaching Norby Station. We have a we have a short upward gradient through Norby Station. The other side of Norby Station, it becomes a steep downward gradient into the following station, which is Shretham Common. So at that point, our speed should reach 70 miles an hour. So yeah, you can see we're hitting the upward gradient now, just passing through Norbury Station. So our speed's starting to roll back down towards 60 miles an hour. 
and then we're crossing over the summit for that gradient now we're now on a steep downward gradient and just keep an eye on the speedometer you're going to see what i'm talking about the speed is literally going to roll up to 70 miles an hour just through gravity So this is Streatham Common Station that we're passing through. And yep, we're doing about 67 miles an hour. So that's probably the highest speed we're going to reach. I don't think we're going to get all the way up to 70 miles an hour. So from here up until Balham Station, we're going to be on fairly level terrain. So again, gravity is just going to cause our speed to naturally fall off we're going to shortly enter a straight section of track and at the end of that straight section of track is where our speed limit falls to 60 miles an hour and we're already doing 62 and a half miles an hour so by the time we reach that we should be doing under 60 I'm scratching my neck, so if you guys can hear that. So yeah, as you can see, we're down to 60 miles an hour. I think we're doing about 61, but it's, it's not the end of the world. In fact, now we are doing 60 miles an hour and there's our 60 board there. So just before you enter the, in fact, just as you enter the left hand curve on the approach to Balham Station, that's where your speed falls to 60 miles an hour. On the other side of Balham Station, we're going to enter a very steep downward gradient. So what I'm actually going to do, once our speed begins to roll, yep, our speed's starting to roll above 60 miles an hour. So I'm going to make a break step one application. And I'm actually going to decelerate down to about maybe, I'd say about 47 and a half miles an hour. That might sound surprising. But the reason why I'm doing that, yeah, so we're down to 47 and a half. I've just released the brakes there. This is Wandsworth Common Station that we're passing through. The reason I'm decelerating down to 47 and a half miles an hour is because we're going to be on a, I'd say, a fairly shallow downward gradient between here and about a mile after Clapham Junction, half a mile after Clapham Junction, which is the next station. So by the time that gradient levels off, we should have rolled back up to 60 miles an hour. If you were planning on stopping at Clapham Junction station, maybe don't decelerate all the way down to 47 and a half miles an hour. Maybe decelerate to about 52 and a half maybe. But because we're not stopping at Clapham Junction, I've gone all the way down to 47 and a half. And that just gives us a bit of room to roll up to 60 miles an hour. So yeah, you can see speed limits already i mean speed is already rolled up to more or less 60 miles an hour this is clapham junction station that we're passing through now So yeah, I'd say around here is where the shallow downward gradient levels off.
and I'm going to make a brake step one application because we have a reduction in the speed limit down to 45 miles an hour. So, yep, there we go. We just passed the board for that speed limit now, but it was very hard to make out. So, I've released the brakes. We are down at 45 miles an hour. And we're now entering an upward gradient. It's not too steep, but it is fairly steep. So I'm probably going to need to use power notch one just to maintain 45 miles an hour. So yeah, I'm doing that now. And shortly after passing this signal here, I'm going to shut off the power. This is Battersea Park Station that we're passing through now. And that marks the summit of the upward gradient. So we're shortly going to be on a downward gradient and then the track levels off after that. So yeah, we should be on fairly level terrain now. Acknowledging an audible AWS indication regarding a double yellow signal. So I'm going to make a break set one application from now. That tells us that the signal protecting London Victoria Station is displaying a red aspect. So we need to be prepared to stop there. If that double yellow signal was displaying a green aspect, then that would tell us that we're cleared into London Victoria Station. I just acknowledged an audible AWS indication regarding a single yellow signal. So that again just tells us that the signal protecting London Victoria Station is displaying a red aspect. So I've decelerated down to about 20 miles an hour, then released the brakes. I can now see the signal protecting London Victoria Station and it is displaying a red aspect. So I'm going to make another brakes at one application. Just acknowledging the audible AWS indication regarding the red signal. We're down to about 10 miles an hour, so I'm going to release the brakes. And just have a nice controlled approach towards this signal at low speed. Just using a couple more bursts of brake step one to keep our speed nice and low. And we're aiming to stop about a carriage length away from the signal. There we go. Right, now that we're stopped at the red signal, PBC goes into the brake step three position, FNR switch goes into neutral, and we set the driver reminder appliance. And the signal is now cleared. We have a number 13 in the theater box indication above the signal that tells us that we've been rooted into the London Victoria platform 13. I'm now resetting the driver reminder appliance. FNR switch can go into forward and we're on a downward gradient. So there's no need for us to use the whole start button. I'm just gonna go straight into power notch one up to power notch two and I'm only going to accelerate up to about 15 miles an hour here. So yeah, we're up to 15 miles an hour. I've shut off the power. It's worth mentioning that the signal protecting a station that is at the end of the line will always display a single yellow aspect when clearing you into the station. So 
So our speed is rolled up to 20 miles an hour. I'm now making a brake step one application. And that is just to bring us down to 15 miles an hour. I was so busy commentating on the signals that I didn't even talk about the speed limits. But <laughs> thankfully we're on a section of track that I previously covered in the Victoria to Rygate, sorry, in the Rygate to Victoria video. So if you guys want to know the speed limits for the section of track into London Victoria, then just go and watch that. I was too busy commentating on the signals. But anyway, so we used the burst of brakes that want to bring us down for 15 miles an hour into the entry into what am I talking about? <laughs> down to 15 miles an hour for the entry into the platform four carriage lengths away from the buffer stops i made another brake step one application to decelerate below 10 miles an hour and about two carriage lengths away from the buffer stop so i'm going to make a final well not a final brake step one application but another brake step one application to decelerate down to five miles an hour and then about a carriage length away from the buffer stops so i'm just using a final series of bursts of brake step one to have a nice controlled stop aiming to come to a stop as the buffer stops disappear beneath the windscreen perfect now that we're at a stand brake step free neutral setting the driver reminder appliance because we are at the end of the line and we have a door release on the left okay we're now going to go through the cab shutdown procedure so our windows are closed f and off switch goes into the off position removing the master key and we're just gonna turn the safety system isolation switches into the horizontal isolated positions and that is it we're now going to exit the cab and just to ensure that okay hold on and just to ensure that we have two red tail lights being displayed which we do so that is it that concludes this commentated drive up from Gatwick to London Victoria on the fast lines I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video and constructive feedback and criticism is more than welcome in the comment section below if you'd like to further support the channel please consider liking and subscribing I will catch you guys in the next one love